Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hands and welcome to the 24 hour Monster Movie Marathon. So it's just before 8am here and for the next 24 hours I'm going to be watching back to back monster movies, creature features, killer bugs, killer aliens, all manner of different things. So all of these movies I've selected from your suggestions so thank you so much once again you all show how amazing you are and have come out and supported this crazy thing that I'm doing. I had over 80 film suggestions, some amazing suggestions and uh, looking forward to uh, getting in as many as I can. I will shout out everyone throughout this video. You'll all get a mention. Your comment will get read out and, uh, and who knows, maybe I've even picked one of your movies to to make up this marathon so join me if you can for the 24 hour monster movie marathon so we're just coming up to 8 a.m i've changed the time slightly for this marathon i'll i'll touch on that later but i thought i'd just go through some of the snacks i've got to keep me going so got some barbecue snacker jacks got some of these bacon rasher things had them the other day and they were quite nice. Some popcorn, got to have popcorn for a movie marathon. Some chocolate and chocolate biscuits. I'm a, a devil for anything chocolate tea. Some meat stuff, some chorizo pepperoni. And I got some fruits as well. I don't want to just eat bad stuff. I've got some veg in the fridge. Have bananas, seen better days. Some kind of fuelish drinks to keep me going. And then the energy drink and the coffee. I'll, I'll put that out later, so yeah, sorry for the shaky cam footage, but that's what I've got to keep me going for the next 24 hours. So the first movie up on this marathon is a, a favourite of mine, and one that I thought would be fun and a good one to start the day, and that is Humanoids from the Deep. So this was suggested by Robert Dunlop. Thank you, Robert. You put Humanoid from the Deep, preferably the original Roger Corman version. Cheesy, but it has its moments. It certainly does, Robert. And yeah, this one has always been a favourite of mine. This kind of sums up everything that I love about creature features and just exploitation trash. It, uh, it really does kind of go for it. And as Robert says, it has its moments. It has some good moments in it, and uh, and yeah, it's just a really fun film. So we'll get this one on, and I'll come back at you very soon. All right. So the layout hasn't changed since last year. I still sit here to watch my movies. I like to have that door open there so I can look in at the collection, and I still have the now playing stand next to the TV just so it tells me what I'm watching. It's a cool little thing to do. So, yeah, so we're still still the same kind of setup. So, yeah. So, Human Knowledge from the Deep is underway, starting like Jaws. It has the original monster title come up. It does say Human Knowledge from the Deep below it, but it's really small. So yeah, can't wait to watch this one again. This was one that, uh, this was a movie that came on TV years ago when I was a kid. And I watched it and loved it and never saw it again for years and years. And because you're a kid, you've kind of, you don't stop to take note of it or, or anything like that. So it was, it was like for a long time, it was this mythical film that I knew I'd seen and was awesome, but just was never around anymore. So to rediscover it many years later was like such a joyful thing for me. And it's uh, just one of those films that no matter how many times I watch it, I just love it every single time. It's like, it's absolutely my kind of movie. So, uh, so again, Robert, thank you for suggesting this one. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll come back at you a bit later when it's, uh, when it's done. Actually, while I watch Humanoid from the Deep, I will give you the list of all the movies that were suggested for this marathon so you can just see what kind of movies 
were mentioned. So take a look at the list. This is what everybody suggested I watch. So you will see me watch some of these movies that are in the list. But uh, once again, some amazing suggestions from everyone. Thank you so much for getting involved and giving me your movie. I, there were so many I wanted to pick. A lot of them were originally on the running order, stuff like that. But there, yeah, there was just so many, I had to leave some off. But every single one was a really good suggestion. And I really do thank everyone for getting involved in the video. But anyway, take a look at this. This is all the movies that were suggested for this 24 hour monster movie marathon. So I thought I'd get some breakfast. So I've got some porridge and berries. I have a healthy start to the marathon. Oh, and there'll be some guests today as well, I hope. So my mum's gonna pop round, so she'll hopefully watch something with me. And I think this evening my sister's coming round as well, so get to see a couple of members of the Horror Hands family. There are the humanoids from the deep in the climax of the movie. Such a cool film. All right. So that was Humanoids from the Deep. Again, fantastic suggestion there, Robert. Thank you. So, Humanoids from the Deep. Oh my goodness. Cinematic perfection. Everything that I look for in a horror movie is crammed into Humanoid from the Deep. It's scary, it's silly, it's gory, it's comical. It's got great characters, bad taste in places. The monsters get plenty of screen time and it's paced incredibly well. There are so many like really awesome top level moments in this movie and there's there's things that happen in this where typically in other horror films they'd happen like right at the end but they're in this sort of like from sort of 10-15 minutes into the movie and they're just scattered throughout the whole thing so yeah really really great to see Humanoid from the deep again I thoroughly enjoyed watching it it's um I, I can see why it didn't get more mainstream, but if, if you are into B-movie monster movies, you absolutely have to see Humanoid from the Deep. It's the absolute blueprint of how to do low-budget, entertaining horror movies. I know the director, Barbara Peters, she, she complained that after production, Roger Coleman kind of splashed it up a bit with more sex and violence. Which I say thank you, Roger Corman, but um, yeah, but whatever, whatever the production was like, it is, it is like the ultimate low budget uh, monster movie. So again, thank you, Robert, for suggesting that. So we will uh, we'll move on to the second movie. Okay, so we are one movie down, and on to the second movie. Now for the second movie, I got a few suggestions for Bigfoot related horror movies so i'm going to go for one of these so second up we have creature from black lake now this was suggested by just dave just dave you put a uh, very cool i love the last video i picked creature from black lake so yeah i'm gonna go for this one i haven't seen this movie for years and don't really remember anything about it so i thought it would be a good chance to revisit this one so for the second movie we're going to go with creature from black lake okay 
So it is 9.30 a.m. in the morning and Creature from Black Lake is underway. Definitely getting Boggy Creek vibes already from, from this one. But this is going to be interesting because this is uh, pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much going to be watching this for the, for the first time. Uh, even though I've, I've seen it, I got it on DVD years ago and have not watched it since. So yeah, looking forward to, to revisiting Creature from Black Lake. So I'll give this one a watch and then I'll come back to you in a bit and we'll, we'll start on reading out some of your comments and suggestions. So not the best picture quality on this. It is an old DVD. I know Severin have brought this out on Blu-ray, which might be the way to go now. But I have to say, I do often, I often find the poor picture quality to be quite endearing because it reminds me of how I would have watched these when I was a kid on, on VHS. So I, I, I don't always mind sort of a grainy picture and uh, these kind of movies, it, it, it can suit it sometimes. Okay, so while Creature from Black Lake is on, I'll read out some of your comments, some of your suggestions, and, and give you some, some shout outs. So first up, Last Venom 76. Hi Eric, hope you're doing okay. You suggested Cemetery Gates. That's a good suggestion. I don't hear that movie talked about very often, and it's a, it's a fun monster movie. So thank you for that. Johnny Unforeseen, uh, you put, I'll go with the horror comedy Black Sheep. I love the practical effects in that film. I was going to say Cellar Dweller, but I saw that you did a review of that very recently. Yeah, I reviewed Cellar Dweller as part of the Enter the Video Store box set from Arrow. But Black Sheep is a great suggestion. I haven't seen that for a long time, and uh, I also like the practical effects in that one. It was another, another good one. Forgotten Realm, got to have a bit of Jaws in the lineup somewhere. Jaws, well, it is my favourite film. So, yeah, great suggestion. Thank you, Forgotten Realm. Wacky World Lounge, Rob. You put, I forget, which version of Nightbreed do you own? And have you seen both versions? If not, I would like to suggest you watch the cut you haven't seen. They are quite different. Yeah, I have both versions of Nightbreed. I think it's the director's cut that I haven't watched. And I really tried to get it in this marathon. I think it's quite, I think it might be about two hours long. So I haven't put it on at the moment. But yeah, I really want to, to be honest, I want to watch both versions of Nightbreed because it's been so long since I've seen both. I'd like to watch them again. But uh, thank you, Rob, from the Wacky World Lounge. That is a great suggestion. Uh, David Diggs, this was a good comment. So you suggested The Wolfman, but the 2010 version. Uh, and you put The Wolfman 2010. I really enjoyed seeing this movie on my 33rd birthday. It tanked at the box office, but I really liked seeing Anthony Hopkins play a devious character. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed seeing it on your birthday. And yeah, it, uh, it is cool to see actors go against their, their usual time. But I, I think I kind of remember thinking it was okay, nothing special, but it was an all right movie. Uh, it was on the running list at some point. I don't know if I'll have time for it now, but yeah, great suggestion. Uh, Monkey Tube, you put, fun idea, buddy. I'd like to suggest Troll Hunter from 2010. Yeah, that is a really good film. I really like Troll Hunter. I think I went to the, to the cinema to see that, which was quite random, but yeah, very fun film. Film Wolf, uh, hi, Bryn. Go with The Descent. Uh, when you realise that you're not alone underground, yeah, The Descent was a really scary film again i've not seen it for a long time i'd really like to re revisit it um but yeah that is a, a good one film wolf thank you for that and uh, the trying scotsman you pretty much had the whole night lined up for me uh you put the thing Pumpkinhead, the hidden night of the demon from 1980 chud gorley's deep rising dog soldiers aliens night of the comet the fly from 86 primeval dawn of the dead and that's you done, mate. Thank me later. <laughs> yeah, that is. That sounds like an awesome lineup. I will give you that, trying Scotsman. I can confirm a, uh, at least one of these is is, is on is going to be part of it. So so thank you for that. Destiny Ranch. You put the blob from 1988. Top stuff. Yeah, that is a great movie. 
I did watch that in my last marathon. So, uh, so yeah, that is a good one. And then you also put, let's have a bit of fun there with the giant claw. I do need to review that. I know you ask a lot about the giant claw. I will get that in at some point. Neil D, you put the 1980s horror, go with the Lost Boys, great soundtrack, absolutely. That is an awesome soundtrack and a great movie. Do a few more. Tara Darwin, you put Dark Was the Night, a really wonderful monster movie that immediately became an annual Halloween tradition of mine. And you put not the Marissa Tomei drama of the same name. Yeah, I need to see Dark Was the, Dark Was the Night. There's actually been a few suggestions of movies that I haven't seen, which I really need to get on. The Bear Jew, put the original Howling, great suggestion, thank you. Um, Matthew, Will Matthew Wills, really glad you're doing another marathon. I have to request what I believe to be the best horror science fiction fantasy movie ever made. I am of course talking about Leprechaun 4 in space. I'm not sure if it's technically a monster movie, but I remember a monster or giant spider in it. It's a hilariously entertaining movie. Yeah, I kind of remember the creature you're talking about. Thanks and good luck staying awake from the mar for the marathon. Thank you, Matthew. I really appreciate that comment. And yeah, Leprechaun 4, it made me smile because there seemed to be a point in time where every part four seemed to take place in space. Uh, they did it with Leprechaun. They did it with Critters 4. That was in space. Uh, Hellraiser 4, that was in space. It was just like, where do we go for the fourth movie? In space. So, so yeah, good suggestion. Eric Jabber, you suggested Gargoyles from 1972. I wish I had it. I need to look up Gargoyles because it's, I, I never come across that film and I don't actually have it in the collection, but you prompted me to look that movie up. So thank you, Eric, for that one. So thank you so much, guys. I will get through some more comments as we go along. I enjoy reading these out and it's a nice way just to thank you and to give you a shout out. So, so thank you so much and we'll get to some more later. All right, that is Creature from Black Lake. That is the second movie down in this marathon. So I enjoy watching that again. It's uh, a lot more slower paced than Humanoid from the Deep. It has a much more of a sleepy town feel to it but i enjoyed it for what it was i've said before i enjoy these kind of old bigfoot movies more for the countryside ambience than anything else which is a bit of a weird reason to watch a movie but i, I really liked it for for what it was you don't see the creature all that much and as i say the picture quality isn't great but it kind of adds to it in a way so it, it was it was it was enjoyable. I did enjoy revisiting this. So thank you again, just Dave, for the suggestion. I would say if you are a fan of these like nineteen seventies Bigfoot movies, definitely give Creature from Black Lake uh, a watch because it is a fun one. So uh, yeah, we'll get on to the uh, third movie in this marathon. Okay, it's eleven a.m. We are two movies down and into the third movie. And for the third movie, we're gonna go with Slither. And this one was suggested by uh, Nablonian88. Thank you for that. Uh, Nablonian, you put, gonna go with Slither, James Gunn, 2006. Great fun and well paced. That movie with a strong coffee should keep you awake if you start to struggle. Best of luck and keep up with the great content. Oh, thank you so much for that, Nablonian, and thank you for this suggestion. So there is another one I've not seen for a while, and I remember it being very entertaining and having some really good, kind of like gooey, practical effects. So it'll be good to see this one again. So third movie up is Slither. Okay, so Slither is underway. So before James Gunn kind of got into all the Marvel movies and the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy films, he, he made this kind of like slimy alien slug movie, uh, which is really awesome. And I thought I would uh, put this one on, like I said, I've not seen it for a while. And I remember really liking the practical effects in this one. And I have a lot of 
suggestions from like the 1970s and 1980s, understandably. But I thought I'd try to put something on that was sort of a bit more modern or from the non noughties. So I thought this would be a good suggestion. So don't forget Nablonian. Uh, it's five past eleven. So yeah, we're just underway with the third movie, Slither, and I'll come back later and let you know what I think. Got Michael Rooker in this one, one of my favourite actors. And there's some of them slimy effects that I was talking about. I'm going to start on these uh, bacon ration crisps. I uh, had them the other day, went out for like a walk and a picnic and had a few of them and we're like, yeah, they are really nice. So I thought I'd get a pack in for the, uh, the marathon. So Michael Rooker has now become a tentacled alien monster. And that's Michael Rooker at the end of it. A bit like the monster at the end of the thing. Alright, that is Slither just finishing. That was a lot of fun. Thank you again, the Bloomian, for suggesting that. But yeah, a lot going on in that movie. A very entertaining one. It's like a a really fun mix of kind of of killer alien slugs and body horror, which is cool. It's also like an element of kind of both like a nod back to the 80s and the 50s as well in terms of like the suburbs being taken over by alien alien creatures. So yeah, I really enjoyed watching Slither again. That was a, a good one to throw into the mar into the marathon and was, uh, was yeah, really entertaining. So awesome. So that's three movies done. It's uh, about 25 to one. I'm just gonna have a bit of a break and then I'll uh, get the uh, get the fourth movie on by about 1 p.m. Okay, three films down. It is just after 1 p.m. and we are on to the fourth movie. And for this fourth choice, we're going vintage and we are gonna go right the way to the 1920s with Nosferatu. Now this suggestion comes from H. Calvert. Thank you, H. You put, if you're looking for silent horror, Nosferatu from 1922 is the most horrific, in my opinion. And you've also given me a ton of werewolf recommendations as well. Thank you for that, H. I, I need to look at them. I was up till late putting this together and, and haven't even haven't had time to factor those in. But I will look at your werewolf suggestions as well because there's some good ones there. But yeah, Nosferatu, uh, definitely a, a classic movie of the silent age. And uh, I'm trying to throw in a few different things into this marathon as well. So this will be a good example of some, some really old fashioned horror. And at 66 minutes, it's quite apt for a, a movie marathon. So thank you very much, H. I know you also said you'd buy me an energy drink if you were able to, so thank you so much for that. I will take you up on Nosferatu, and this is going to be the fourth movie in this monster movie marathon. Okay, so Nosferatu is underway as the fourth movie, and I've got some company. My mum's joined me for this one. Just for a bit of company. So have you seen Nosferatu before? No, I don't think so. I think I've only seen clips of it. I've not seen the film. Yes, the okay. Through. So yeah, this is an interesting one. It's a silent, it's a silent movie, mm -hmm. but even still now, it's it's still effective. I think it's got a lot of creepy imagery mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. So so yeah, for watch Nosferatu, and we'll come back to you soon. Okay. Mum's also bought the family dog as well. So it's nice to have some doggy company on the marathon. <laughs> creepy, isn't it, Mum? Very, very creepy character. <laughs> Even now, like over a hundred years old, I think it still delivers yeah. in being a unsettling Definitely. horror film. Yeah, it's uh, very scary. Okay, that is Nosferatu from 1922. What did you think of that, Mum? It's good, I enjoyed that. 
What? I often prepay sometimes for me. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of watching a silent movie? Yeah, I don't mind. Don't mind that. Doesn't mm. put me off. Mm. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, it was good. It's like obviously it's it's age. It's over a hundred years old, but it's amazing to think it's that was done over a hundred years ago. Mm. And we could do that. Mm. And even now, though, despite how old it is, every single scene with Max Shrek as Han Orlock is like top-notch horror. Yeah. He absolutely creeps the place out yeah, and does. still holds up, I think, to any sort of yeah. main modern horror character. So, yeah, it was good to, good. yeah, good to watch Nosferatu. It was like when they projected his image, you, to be able to do that at that time. Mm. Yeah. Was, that surprised me. That's yeah, good. yeah. That. I enjoyed that. So. Good. So, yeah, thank you, H. Calvert, for suggesting that. And we will uh, move on shortly to the uh, fifth movie in the marathon. Okay, guys, so we are four movies down. We are on to the fifth one. And for the fifth one, we're going to go to the 90s. And we are going to watch Ticks. So we've got some mini micro monsters with this one, Ticks is a really enjoyable film. Another one with some really cool, gooey, practical effects. So this one actually had two suggestions. Uh, Jason Healy, you put eeny, meeny, miny, Ticks, <laughs> which was cool. And then Trev from Double Bill Movies, uh, you put go for it, Bryn. My suggestion, uh, as I just watched it in 4K, is Ticks. And then you put, I'm infested. <laughs> so, yeah, Ticks, another uh, great film. One that I was happy to see get a couple of suggestions. So, here we go with the fifth movie, Ticks. All right, here we go with Ticks. It's a really cool film. It's like these city kids that go to this woodland retreat, but they get attacked by... Mutant ticks, as simple as that, really. But yeah, this is a, another really good one for the marathon. So, I'm gonna watch this. I've got some, uh, I'm gonna crack open the chorizo pepperamas, which are really nice. I'm gonna finish off some of the berries from breakfast this morning just to get a bit of fruit down me. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll eat these. Uh, watch a bit of ticks and I'll come back and read out some more of your guys' comments. It's 25 past two, so yeah, we're still going strong. See, they call me panic because I never do. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was such a funny line. They call me panic because I never do. It's like stupid but oddly cool at the same time. So while ticks is on, I'll read out a few more of your comments, do some more shout outs. So Vampire Jack, you suggested Spawn of the Slithis. What an awesome suggestion. I really love Slithis, it was a great movie. I did have it on my running list for a bit, but I, I don't think I'm gonna get time for it. But yeah, that is a really awesome suggestion. Uh, Quentin Tarantino is a fan of that movie as well. There's a video on YouTube of him talking about Slithis. So yeah, thank you, Vampire Jack. James Moss, you suggested The Blob from 1988. Yeah, great movie. Like I say, I um, I did watch that in my previous 24-hour marathon. Uh, Richard Variety, you put Nutcase. I thought you were suggesting a film at first, but I think that's aimed at me. <laughs> so Nut Nutcase, fair play. It was, it was a rather good watch last year. Suffering on your viewers' behalf. Good lad. Anyway, my suggestion would be Tremors, which is what you'll have after 24 hours of no kip. Good luck, Mooka. Thank you, Richard. Yes, I probably will. It does get uh, does get tough later on. Uh, Funky Trousers, you suggested Q, The Winged Serpent. It's a good movie. Horrific Nightmares, JM. My favourite creature feature, Revenge of the Creature. So cool you're doing this again, Bryn. Thank you, Jason. And yeah, Revenge of the Creature is an awesome film. I know we spoke via your comments, but it always kind of reminds me of like Jaws 3. It's like a precursor to that movie because they keep the creature in like an, an, an aquatic 
amusement park only for it to break out. So yeah, it's always reminding me of Jaws 3. Horror Hound, The Brain Eaters, great suggestion. I don't know how many people will talk about The Brain Eaters. Joe Osborne, you suggested how to make a monster, the 2001 version. I've, seen, I've never seen that version. I'm only familiar with the 50s one. I need to look up the 2001 version. Uh, Nick Paulson, Tarantula, keep up the awesome channel. Love Nick and Deb. Thank you guys. And Tarantula, yeah, absolutely awesome. Love that movie. Stuart George, uh, lots of caffeine, mate, definitely. I've got some ready for later on. Uh, James Hood, uh, if you have Shudder, there's a film called Slugs. It's awful, but good at the same time. Yeah, Slugs is one, I, I, again, I don't think there's time, but I really wanted to get Slugs in. I haven't seen it for years, and I, I remember it being terrible, yet kind of fun at the same time. So thank you for that. That is a, a really good suggestion, James. Uh, Jamie Frisbee, glad you are doing this again, Bryn. Enjoyed it last year. Exciting, fun, interesting. My nomination is The Exorcist. Love this movie. Yeah, like I say, possibly the greatest movie of all time. It's an interesting suggestion because I kind of was thinking, is that a monster movie? But yeah, like she does get pretty monstrous in the second half, doesn't she? So yeah, good suggestion there, Jamie. Thank you. Uh, Jackalopium, don't show any of the big G. Toho will end up owning your soul and your home. Yeah, I've heard Toho are pretty stringent with, with copyrights and Godzilla stuff. Uh, so your suggestion is Razorback. I remember you picked it up a few months ago. I did, yeah, thank you for remembering. And I did have watched it, and yeah, Razorback was a cool movie. So it's a giant killer war film. Movie buff, Creature from the Black Lagoon, awesome suggestion. Watched that not too long ago for my... Universal Monsters video and really enjoyed revisiting that. It's a great 50s movie. Uh, Richard the Walking Boom, get on some G get on some decent jello bread. That's a cool suggestion. I know we've I talked to you a bit about this, but I was trying to think of some monster related jellos and I can't think of any. If anyone can let me know. Uh Tamar Rosenberg Walker, you suggested a Bigfoot movie called Exists. Yeah, Exist is a really cool film. I, I saw that a while back, and it, it is awesome. So, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Jesse Yardborough, War of the Gargantrons. What a great suggestion there. I don't hear many people mention that movie. Uh, BBB, Gotta Go Creature from the Black Lagoon, and Q. Have fun and have coffee at hand, definitely. Thank you for those. Uh, Buster X25. Here's my suggestion for you. Alligator from 1980. Love this film. Robert Forster is brilliant in this film. First time I watched it, I was blown away. Yeah, Alligator is like a legit awesome film. Like, it's a good killer animal monster movie, but like, on the plane of just general cinema, Alligator really could kind of hold its own. It is a seriously good movie. So yeah, thank you, Buster. Totally agree with you about, about Alligator there. Uh, Joffy Noodle Legs, Jaws, of course, bud. Yeah, thank you, Joff, my favourite film. Uh, Sam Universe Production, Bride of Reanimator. That's a cool one, thank you for that. Sebastian Weber, he put De Nachtmar, which I think you're referring to The Nightmare, the German film from 2015. I still need to get that, but thank you for reminding me of that one, Sebastian. And that's all for now. I've got some more, so we'll read out some more along the way. Like I say, everyone will get a shout out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just a few. Carry on with tips, and I'll come back at you later on. Oh, I found a mutant tips right there. All right, that is ticks. And I gotta say, that really doesn't get as much credit as it should for the amazing practical effects that are in that one. Some really good stuff. A lot of like pulsating egg sac kind of effects. And then these sort of mutant ticks spewing out and running around everywhere. And it's like a giant monster tick thing at the end. 
really enjoyable film. I like the setting of this one as well, in, in the woods and just like the quite picturesque area. And the characters are in it, that are in it are really good as well. They're like all like 90s teenager, like MTV style uh, young people, which is cool to see. So awesome. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Trev and Jason, both for suggesting takes. I really enjoyed seeing that one again. Quarter four, I think I'm just going to go for a little bit of a quick walk, stretch my legs, get some fresh air, and then we'll be back with the sixth movie in this marathon. All right, guys, so I've just come out for a quick walk. Just going to get some fresh air and stretch my legs, just break it up a bit. I'm going to be sat for 24 hours straight, but uh, just have a quick walk around here. It's beautiful out here at the moment. And then we'll get back onto the marathon, back on to the sixth film, I believe. So I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. So I'm just going to do a check around this field and then we'll be straight back on with the monster movie marathon. So when I'm not watching movies, I do love getting out and about, going for walks and things like that. So quite fortunate to have a couple of nice locations like this only a few minutes from where I live so yeah nice to just get out here for 20 minutes half an hour we're now five movies into the marathon on to the sixth one and I couldn't do this without including something from the 1950s and we've had some great suggestions, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Revenge of the Creature, Tarantula, all movies I would have loved to have gotten on. But the one I want to go for from this period is The Blob. So the 50s Blob with a young Steve McQueen fighting the gelatinous alien creature. Now this has been suggested by Matthew Wood. Thank you, Matthew, for your suggestion. Uh, you put good luck for me. The era for monsters is the 1950s, and my favourite of these is The Blob. It's a classic. Come on, a 28-year-old Steve McQueen playing a teenager. What's not to love? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for the comments. Uh, this is an interesting role for Steve McQueen. And this is a movie that I've not seen for a long time as well, so kind of like uh, Creature from Black Lake. It'll be like watching this for the first time again. So... Bit of 1950s representation here now. The sixth movie on this marathon is The Blob. All right, so some Criterion collection on the Monster Movie Marathon. So here we go with the original Blob. And uh, the main thing, I was, all I really remember from this, I think is when it attacks to see the cinema and bits of The Blob sort of pull straight through the through the, the, the ducting on the wall. Uh, so yeah, it'd be good to see this one again. Thank you again, Matthew, for suggesting it. So here we go with the blob. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll watch a bit more of this and then I'll read out some more uh, comments and give you some shouts out. What we're on, 25 past four. Uh, so yeah, okay, I'll come back at you soon. There's a young Steve McQueen, actually called Steve in the movie as well. Alright guys, more comments time. So, have Cheetah will view. You suggested Skin and Marink from 2023. And yes, it's a monster movie. Yeah, I need to check that one out. I haven't watched that one yet. I've, I've seen it pop up here and there online. So yeah, I will, I will get Skin and Marink at some point and give it a watch. Salem's Lot and More, you suggested It, The Terror from Beyond Space from 1958. Thanks for the video, thank you for watching. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. The movie that inspired Alien, if I remember correctly. So that's cool. Uh, cool Flick Fix 24, hi Leon. You put awesome, Bryn. I look forward to your 24 hour marathon video, thank you. My recommendations are going to be It's Alive and The Predator. Yeah, cool recommendations. I feel like watching The Predator again. I, I thought it was okay, 
for what it was. And it, it's alive pretty cool as well. I like the third one of that. Uh, is it Island of the Alive? Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, Titanic Survivor. Really like your comment. You put, uh, you need some humour when you are watching 24 hours of horror movies. I would choose Arachnophobia or Eight-Legged Freaks. Two awesome suggestions there. I, I almost added one of those two to the list. Uh, you then put, maybe go creative and watch Idle Hands. Technically, it's a creature feature. No matter what you choose, I will definitely watch. Well, thank you so much, Titanic Survivor. Uh, like I say, Arachnophobia in particular was on the running list, but I don't think I'm going to have time for it. But I really appreciate the suggestions and sort of adding a bit of humour to the marathon as well. So thank you for that. Uh, Paul R. Davis, Slugs. Yeah, I really want to rewatch Slugs because uh, it is a fun one. Destiny Ranch, Leviathan, another great oddball. Yeah, I only have Leviathan on VHS because it's quite hard to find on DVD and Blu-ray. Hopefully I'll get a 4K release. Uh, Bloom Bloom, The Fun House. Great monster film for this marathon. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Been a while since I've watched that one. Max Washington Songs, awesome. How about Stitches? The Island Clown movie from 2012. I actually need to get Stitches. It's another one that's been recommended that I don't own. I, I need to get Stitches because I've heard quite good things about it. Uh, Cazador Splinter 2008 is very underrated. Yeah, that is a good one, Cazador. Thank you for that. Alan Slade, Prophecy 1979. What a, what a suggestion. Prophecy 1979, Talia Shire. I love that film uh, from what I remember watching it at the cinema. Great film. It is an awesome film. I absolutely love Prophecy. Fantastic movie. Uh, Paul and Jane. Hi, Bryn. Looking forward to the 24-hour marathon again. My suggestion is Night Beast from 1982. Night Beast is awesome. Again, one of the ones that I had visions of watching, but it just got so many... So many other suggestions, but yeah, Night Beast is, is awesome. So yeah, thank you guys. A few more comments there. I'll come back to you in a bit when the blob's finished and we'll read out some more and I'll, I'll shout out some more people. There is the blob. I like how it looks in this movie. And it is kind of creepy how it's like featureless. And that is the blob, or oh, little question mark there. So yeah, that was great. Good to see that one again. It's been a while. Love the look of the blob in that movie. And anything from the 50s has a, a lot of charm to it. I think I uh, probably prefer the 80s version a little bit more, because that's just the one I saw when I was a kid. But yeah, that is a really good film. And it's one that, although it's the 50s, it's not one that feels all that much sort of science fiction and UFOs. I know the blood does come down on an asteroid, but it feels very much kind of like a an Earth-based horror film, which is which is good. And I forgot all about the little jazzy blob song. It has its own song, which doesn't really go with the film, but is is fun nonetheless. So anyway, that's the blob. It's ten to six. I'll aim to get another one, uh, another movie on by six o'clock. So uh, yeah, see you see you soon. So The Blob was the sixth movie in this marathon. We're swiftly going on to the seventh. And the seventh one is a favourite of mine. One of the most imposing movie monsters that there is. And also one of the most underrated, I think. But the seventh movie on this list is going to be Pumpkinhead. So this one had a couple of nominations. So Martin McLaughlin... Hi Martin, thank you so much for all the support you give the channel. You put, hi mate, another 24 hour marathon is upon us. Pumpkinhead, it's just got to be done. <laughs> uh, have an awesome night mate, thank you so much Martin. And then Lee Fitter, you put, hi Bryn, I'm going for Pumpkinhead, so thank you both of you. Pumpkinhead will be the seventh movie in this marathon, so... I'll get this one on and, uh, and keep things going. All right, we are underway with Pumpkinhead. 
and absolute favourite of mine since childhood. This is one that I saw late at night on TV as a kid and I've loved it ever since. Stan Winston, his only directing credit from what I remember. Uh, but yeah, Pumpkinhead is an absolutely awesome movie. A dark fairy tale of uh, Lance Henriksen who lives out in the country with his little boy who's actually quite cute as far as horror kids go and he's killed in a motorcycle accident these reckless teenagers hit his son and kill him and in all of this kind of grief and anger Lance Henriksen summons a demon of vengeance to kill off the teenagers one by one but the demon starts to take more than just that, shall we say. And it's, yeah, Punking Out is an awesome movie. Thank you, uh, Martin and Lee, for suggesting it. But yeah, uh, this is going okay. Starting to feel it a little bit now, but I'm not even halfway through, which is pretty scary. But we'll, uh, we'll keep on powering through. My sister will be around in a bit to give me some company. And I'll, I'll come back in a bit with some more comments as well. No matter how many times I see this movie, this scene with the bike getting the kid always gets to me. Really well done scene. Very effective movie. Man, Pumpkinhead was such a beast of a monster. Like, I love how he sort of indiscriminately goes after everyone. I know he's summoned by Lance Hendrickson, but he somewhat reminds me of like, the Cenobites in uh, Hellraiser. Like, he's not there to judge. He just gets summoned and does his thing. All right, guys, that's Pumpkinhead done. And that was a seriously awesome movie. I know I said that's been a favourite of mine since childhood, but watching that again has really boosted it up there. Such a good film. It's a bit like when I talked about Alligator earlier, like, just a genuinely good film but I think the fact that it's like a monster movie trashes it a bit but really awesome to watch it Pumpkinhead the monster is uh, is really impressive and imposing and yeah really kind of like it's not very trashy it's more like a bittersweet story with his son being killed and then the vengeance side so yeah really enjoy watching that again so thank you again uh, Martin and Lee for suggesting that so Come back at you in a minute and we'll get the next film on. All right, guys, we are seven movies into the marathon. On to the eighth one. Now, you might think that tiredness has got to me a bit at this stage and I've gone a bit crazy. But uh, remember how I didn't pick Jaws? Well, we've gone for a similar shark classic with Sharknado. So, yes, Heather Smith has uh, commented saying no marathon is complete without a Sharknado so I'll take your word for that so we're going to go with this one it'll be something a bit different it's a other end of the scale we've seen a lot of kind of like cool practical effect creatures so we'll go for the insane over the top CGI of Sharknado so this will be up next in the marathon Okay guys, Sharknado has started. So I've got a guest for this one. My sister has joined me. So we've got Carly here to watch this one. Hello. So, <laughs> so Carly is sort of like a casual movie fan. You don't collect them like me, but you, yeah. you watch the occasional film. But crazily, Carly is a huge fan <laughs> of Sharknado. So which completely took me by surprise. <laughs> so she's come round to, to watch this one with me. But it's not just this one, you like all like this mega shark super yeah, gator ones, don't you? with a giant animal in. Okay, well, oh, yeah, <laughs> awesome. You're on the right channel. Yes. So, <laughs> so, okay, so me and Carly are gonna watch uh, Sharknado and we'll come back to you later and let, me, let you know what we uh, think of this cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> so we've just got pizza in, which is awesome. Some pepperoni pizza. So pizza and Sharknado. What would you want? Oh yeah, it doesn't get any better. Actually, it probably does with Sharknado, but the, the pizza's pretty nice. <laughs> One thing that me and Carly can't help but notice is like just how trashy the film looks. Like it looks like PlayStation 2 
It's really weird. It is quite entertaining, but there's like it's such a bizarre level of like cinematography. It's it's weird. Very noticeable. <laughs> For heaven's sake. My gosh, right, so that is Sharknado over with. Did you enjoy that, Carly? I did. Did you? Uh, I'll give it this. I like how enthusiastically silly it is. Yeah. Like. It's entertaining. Yes. Like a lot of bad movies are bad because they're like boring or creative that there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. At least this kind of goes out its way to be as crazy silly as yeah. it can be. Yeah. And by proxy, it is somewhat entertaining. So bad it's good. I'll give it that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, but um, yeah, it just looks a bit awful. That's, <laughs> that's the worst thing about it. But it, it is entertaining. I, have, I could say that about it. I don't think I could say much else good, but it was fun to watch it as part of the marathon. So um, that was Sharknado. I'll come back to you uh, soon with the with the next movie. All right, guys, so Sharknado was the eighth movie in this marathon. Moving straight on to the ninth, a movie that's slightly better, I would say, than Sharknado. We're going for John Carpenter's The Thing. So I had two suggestions for this. So, uh, the trying Scotsman, you put the thing. That was easy. <laughs> and uh, who else said this? Poor Richards, you said got to be the thing. So, yeah, I know it's a very popular movie. So, yeah, next up on the marathon is John Carpenter's The Thing. Okay, so here we go with The Thing. One of my favourite movies. <coughs> Carly's going to stay for this one, which will be interesting. You say you've seen this? Yeah, not for a long time, though. She hasn't seen it for a long time. But I thought it would be cool because, like, in both of our households, Kurt Russell is the man. Yeah, we love Kurt so, Russell. So, yes, we will enjoy watching Kurt Russell. Yeah. And the thing is, the thing is actually the most popular movie on my channel. I did a poll not long ago and, like, lots of people voted for the favourite horror film and the thing won it by miles. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, the thing is the sort of official horror hands. Mm -hmm favourite movie so yeah it is a fantastic film so we'll watch the thing and come back to you to you soon what's this car God. you okay <laughs> Arguably the greatest practical effects in a horror film. Look at that. Oh. Wow. Okay, so that is the thing. A, in my opinion, a perfect horror movie. I won't talk about it too much because I dare say. Everyone that watches my channel has seen it and likes it. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. That was brilliant. It really? Yeah, brilliant. Do you see the ambiguous ending? Like, who could be yeah. the thing? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. It's a pleasure to watch it with you. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, I really enjoyed watching it again. It's, as I say, yeah, amazing horror film. Can't believe it flopped when it came out. Yeah, which that's is crazy. Cre yes, it is. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Did you like the effects in it? Yeah, I loved Fact it. <laughs> yes. When you turn, that's pretty yes. cool. Yeah, excellent, yeah. that's cool. So uh, yeah, that, that's awesome. Great to, yeah, great to watch that with you, Carly. So um, yes, I'll come back at you all soon with the next movie. Okay guys, it is 10 to 11. Carly's gone, I'm on my own again, but that was lovely to see her. But yeah, starting to feel it now, starting to get tough. This is usually, I'd be in bed at this time. So the next movie is going to start to get pretty hard going. After that, it's really going to be a, be a slog. So I think I'm going to have a quick shower just to try and brighten myself up a little bit, get a coffee, and then we'll be on 
to the next movie. I can't remember what number we're on now, but we'll I'll total them all up soon and get back on it. So back at you real quickly. So I'm just making the first coffee of the night to perk me up. Haven't explained the timing of this marathon yet. So I started this at 8 a.m. Last year I started it about like 5 p.m. Which was okay, but the problem was I'd like been up the whole day. So started at 5 p.m. Had to get through to the 5 p.m. the next day, and you've almost not been up for two days. So it was really tough. So my thinking was. If I started this thing at 8 a.m. this time, then I'm relatively fresh. I've not been up as long. So I've just got to get through the day, which is like standard, and then sort of get through the night and I can stop at 8 a.m. and not got to go, go any further and sort of have to keep performing, if you will. Not got to keep watching movies and making videos. I can get to 8 a.m. And, and sort of rest from, from there on in. So... That was my thinking. I don't think there's any kind of easy way to do this thing, but yeah, I didn't. I, I struggled with being up the whole of the day prior to the marathon last year, so that was my thoughts behind that. Right, we are on to the tenth movie, which is just crazy that we've got through that many. So the tenth movie on this marathon is going to be Chud. And this was a request, this comes from Hudson. He simply put, hey bud, fancy some chud? Well, actually Hudson, yes. Yes, I do. So this is going to be the next movie that we watch on this marathon. All right, chud is underway. Cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. This is ever a title that you want to make irresistible to me. That is it. So this one, I'm sure, is going to be fun. So this one is another movie that I haven't watched for a long time. One of the cool things about this marathon, these kind of marathons, is I get the chance to re-watch things that I've not seen for a long time. Sure, I've not seen it since the, I got it on DVD when the DVD was a new release. So that's how long it's been since I've watched this one, so I'm looking forward to watching this. So, 25 past 11, the shower and the coffee has done me a bit of good. I feel a bit more alert. I was struggling whilst Carly was here. She, she did well to, 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 to keep me awake. So, so yeah, but I feel a bit more sprightly after that. Uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll watch a bit of Chud and I'll come back to you soon. While I'm feeling alert, I'll read out a few more comments. Still got a few more to go through. So, Snowman, you said, I just saw Dog Soldiers, so I'm going with that one. Great suggestion. Dog Soldiers is one that I really need to watch again. It's been longer than I realised since I've seen it, and I know it's a great movie. So, yeah, I need to get that one on at some point. I probably won't have time tonight, but, yeah, that is a good suggestion. Uh, Shane Kirkley, you put, I watched Mimic for the first time in years the other day and I had forgotten how good it was. Well worth a go. Yeah, Mimic, same as Dog Soldiers. I can't tell you how long it's been since I watched that movie, but I know it's a really good film. So thank you so much, Shane, for the, for the suggestion. Uh, Mike B, Macho Libre, since you recently talked up the Boggy Creek movies, my pick for you would be another Bigfoot flick. Willow Creek. Good luck with the marathon. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, I have been big into Boggy Creek films recently. I recently got Boggy Creek too. Uh, so I really appreciate another Bigfoot recommendation. I've covered that with Creature from Black Lake. But Willow Creek's an interesting one. I don't actually own Willow Creek. I absolutely need to pick that one up. I'm going to look that, look that up soon uh, so that I get that one. Uh, Jason Smith. The Night Flyer, I wish I had it. The Night Flyer is a doozy to try and get hold of. And just the really old DVD is pretty costly. So I'm, I'm really holding out for a nice edition of The Night Flyer. I don't know if we'll ever get it. I really hope we do. 
by all accounts, it's a fantastic movie. So I, I wish, I, I wish I had it, Jason. Thank you for the suggestion. Neil D from Universal Monsters. I picked the Mummy's Tomb from 1942. Great suggestion. I love getting some of the old ones suggested to me. Thank you for that, Neil. Monster Gab. Hi, Monster Gab. I love that you're doing this again, Bryn. I can't wait to see the video. Thank you, mate. Thank you for the support. Absolutely loving the channel. It's truly entertaining with constant quality content. Well, thank you so much. I'd like to recommend Tremors, but if you watch it, you have to introduce it in the best Southern American accent you can do. <laughs> Thank you for that. I don't know if I can do that now due to tiredness, but yeah, that certainly would be fun. Thank you for the lovely comment, Monster Gab. Uh, Rene Peters, you put the untold story will keep you awake. Yeah, he was a he was a bit of a psycho in that film, wasn't he? Bit of a bit of a human monster with the untold story. Uh, Beef Curtains, The Rejuvenator, nineteen eighty eight. I believe this movie is super underrated. I actually had to look that one up. I had to Google The Rejuvenator. I've, I've never seen it and I don't own it. I definitely need to give it more focus. I'm not sure if it's got an official release or not. But yeah, I need to get on The Rejuvenator. Thank you, Beef Curtains, for bringing that one to my attention. Wilma Wilmington, Razorback has already been suggested, which I second. So how about Deep Space for a bit of sci-fi horror? Deep Space is awesome. It is one that I strongly considered because I would love to watch Deep Space. It's such a cool sci-fi alien movie. So thank you so much, Wilma Wilmington, for that one. What else we got? Get a couple more in. I've read those. Yeah, read those. Uh, Jason Taylor, an American werewolf in London. You may need a few laughs to get you through the marathon. That is definitely true, Jason. Thank you for the suggestion. Vince Vito, good luck. Thank you. Dawn of the Dead, 1978, the director's court. Awesome suggestion. Thank you for that, Vince. That's probably a little bit too long for the marathon, but I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Black Hill... I'm really looking forward to this. Your last marathon watch was great fun. Thank you. So many to choose, but for having Tom Atkins at his fantastic best, I'm voting for Night of the Creeps. Great choice. Razorback's already been mentioned a few times. That would be my other pick. Yeah, Night of the Creeps, an absolute favourite of mine. I, I, again, I really wanted to get it in. I think at one point it was on the running list. Uh, but yeah, uh, amazing. I love Night of the Creeps. Uh, a couple more here. Let's go with these. Uh, Nick Turk. So you put, looks like you could be setting yourself up to watch The Thing again, given your last poll. Yeah, it was a popular movie. And yes, we did get The Thing in. So I'm going to go with Razorback. Another suggestion for Razorback. Russell Mulcahy's hugely underrated killer ball movie. Not least because it was the last film I bought from Umbrella Entertainment in an altogether splendid box set that even includes the original novel. Oh, okay, that's cool. A visually stunning exploitation gem, well worth revisiting. Yeah, Razorback is awesome. I, I didn't realise how many suggestions I had for Razorback and yeah, that edition from Umbrella certainly sounds nice. So thank you so much, Nick, for your suggestion. Uh, someone is else. This sounds great. Anaconda. Or if you're sick of that, the second one. Or one of the others. But only the first two are good. I've only ever seen the first two and I'm a big fan of it. So yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Someone is else. Uh, who else have we got here? Lee Tom. Hey, horror hands. I love the first horror movie marathon. Uh, you did. This one I'm sure will be great. Thank you so much. My suggestion is the leprechaun. Look forward to this. Have a great weekend, mate. Thank you. Have a great weekend as well, Lee. Really appreciate the suggestion. And then Geyser Hornet. Hope I said that right. Geyser, you suggested the Babadook. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. So, a few more comments to go, but I think they're the ones of the movies that I'm going to watch. So, 
I really hope I've covered everyone so far. But massive thank you for getting involved and sending me your comments and your suggestions. It really does mean a lot. Thank you. One more comment as well. This actually came in whilst I was I just started the marathon. Uh, this is from Madante69. Thank you for, for getting in touch. You put, damn man, picking one is hard. Let's make this fun. I don't want to be too obvious or cliched like saying Jaws or the thing, so I'll suggest some lower profile greats. Grab a six sided dice and then roll. Then pick, then find my pick in the list below. They should all adequately fall under the monster movie definition. And the suggestions you gave were Feast, Slither, which we did watch, Creep Show, Dagon, Cabin in the Woods, and The Life Force. They are some awesome suggestions there, Medante. Thank you for that. Like I say, that just came through as I started the marathon. So I just wanted to get that one in. So yeah, thank you for your support and the suggestions. Oh, there's one of the chud right there. Okay, that is chud finished. Nice to watch that one again. And it's a good movie. I really like the story of chud, sort of like the government dumping the radioactive waste in the sewers, creating those humanoid monsters that are killing off the, the sort of homeless population. A little bit too much focus on the humans for me. I would have liked to have seen the monsters a little bit more. They're in the movie, but you only kind of get quick glimpses of them, which is a shame because they look awesome. And I really like their, their glowing eyes. And I love the shots of the monster's hands coming out of the manhole covers. That's really, really cool. Also fun to see. John Hurd and Daniel Stern in a movie together, post Home Alone, or before Home Alone, I should say. That's uh, interesting. So yeah, fun to re-watch Chud, and I, I really like the look of the monsters. So yeah, that was a fun one. Thank you again, Hudson, for that. It is nearly 1am, so I will uh, shortly get on the uh, the 11th film in this marathon. So Chud was the 10th movie in this marathon. We're going straight on to the 11th. And this is a movie that I actually was hoping this movie would get picked. And I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'd like to have the opportunity to watch it again. And thankfully it has been suggested. Uh, 80s film fan, you suggested this one. And it's The Being. Now... I wanted to watch this. I've seen it a couple of times and I have a kind of a love-hate relationship with the being. It looks amazing. I mean, look at that cover art. That is exactly the kind of movie that I go for. But the few times I've seen it, I've really not enjoyed this movie. Mainly because they really don't show the monster. It gets hardly any screen time whatsoever. It's like they go, go out their way to not show this one. So I'm gonna take uh, take up 80s film fan suggestion and watch it again and see if I like it anymore. But 80s film fan, you put, you're a glutton for punishment, mate. My pick is The Being from 1983. Was gonna go with Slithis, but someone beat me to it. Yeah, Slithis, I would like to have got it in. But yeah, I'll take you up on The Being uh, me, 80s film fan, so uh, number 11 on this marathon, we have The Being. Alright, so it's coming up to 10 past 1 in the morning, and I've got this one on. Like I say, I'm going to see what I think about this. Ruth Bootsy in The Being. So yeah, once again, thank you, 80s film fan. I will give The Being another watch and uh, and see what I think about it. I'll come back at you in a bit uh, when I've checked it out. So my issues with The Being haven't really changed. It's just such a plodding film 
the monster gets very little screen time. You get a quick shot of its hand or a tentacle, the occasional POV shot, but there it is a little bit. But that's all you get. It just it doesn't get any major screen time, which makes for a quite a boring film. It's just it's just not a film that does it for me, unfortunately. Okay, that is the being, and yeah, gotta say that is still a movie that I am not a huge fan of. I just find that one to be a bit too slow, and there's just not enough of the monster in it for me. They they do very little to show the monster on screen, which is a shame because the brief snippets where you actually get to see the creature, it looks awesome. But yeah, it's just not in the movie, and I, I found it. Uh, yeah, I find the being to be rather boring, unfortunately. And it's kind of weird because the reason they don't deal with the monster in this one is because the mayor has a lucrative potato growing business. Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, not a great one, but cool to revisit it. Thank you again, 80s film fan, for suggesting this one. Did me, did give me the chance to check it out again, but unfortunately the being... It's just not a film that I enjoy all that much. So it is 2.30 in the morning. We're powering through this. So we'll get back to you soon with the next movie. On with the 12th movie in this monster movie marathon. And next up, we go back to the 90s with 1995's Castle Freak. So this was suggested by Evil Ash, and you put Castle Freak. Really glad you're doing this again. Make sure you video all the snacks and drink choices you pick up to keep you going to. Yeah, I've been doing that, and uh, and thank you for the suggestion. I'll take you up on Castle Freak, another one I've not seen for many years. So next up, as part of this marathon, Castle Freak. Okay then, here we go with this one, and this is a film I've not seen for a long time, and I've been been very into Full Moon and Empire Picture movies recently, especially with picking up the Enter the Video Store box set from Arrow. I've, I've had a hankering to watch quite a few of these movies, so this will be a good opportunity to, to go back and watch uh, another one of them. So yeah, don't remember seeing, don't remember much about this one. I think Jeffrey Combs, he inherits like a big castle or something and there's a castle freak living in the, in the, dun in the dungeon, which uh, he has to deal with. So yeah, we'll uh, get this one on and uh, I'll let you know what, uh, what I think. So we're coming up to 3am now, nearly 10 to 3. I am feeling tired. So I'm going to break open an energy drink. Now I don't really drink these kind of things, but this is a monster energy drink. So I thought in the spirit of the monster movie marathon, this would be an, an apt beverage to, to have while it's on. Definitely liking the use of the castle location. It makes for a cool atmosphere and kind of gives it like a, a dark fairy tale kind of feel. So yeah, really great use of location and and sets in this one. So yeah, I'm enjoying Castle Freak so far. All right, that's Castle Freak done. Really enjoyed watching that again. I think I enjoyed that more than what I did even the first time around, but <clears throat> As I say, really cool use of the castle location and a uh, pretty gnarly looking creature as well. Thought the castle freak itself was uh, yeah, a pretty cool character and Jeffrey Combs was good in it, Barbara Crampton. So yeah, did really like watching that again. I, I'm enjoying full moon movies more and more. I kind of take them or leave them over the years, but I don't know, I'm really kind of enjoying them at the moment so nice to see castle freak again sorry if it's a bit of a vape 
vague review, but yeah, I am struggling now, but uh, it's going well. So that's Castle Freak. It has just gone four o'clock in the morning, and uh, yeah, let's get the next movie on. Right, we are on to the 13th movie. I'm going to watch this and I'll be able to get another one in. So I think we're going to be able to match the 14 movies that I did last year, which is cool. So the 13th movie, the penultimate movie on this marathon is The Kindred. Awesome monster movie from 1987. Now this was suggested by Pona. Pona, thank you for your suggestion. You did put The Kindred and then I... I thanked you for that and then you put I know it's a weird one and remained unreleased for years but it always stuck with me and I think it has amazing special effects. Fingers crossed you choose it. Yeah, I am going to choose it, Pona, and I agree with you. It does have really good special effects. So next one on the list, 13th movie, is The Kindred. Okay, here we go. This is only going to be a second time watch for me. I got this not too long ago, a few months ago, when it finally got released on Blu-ray. As Pona said, this film remained unreleased for a, for a long while. So I was really happy when this finally did get a release and, and I really enjoyed the film, which was a bonus. So, quarter past four in the morning, we're on with the Kindred. It's, uh, it is officially like tough now. I am really tired, I'm really feeling it. So apologies, you're not gonna get as much out of me at this stage, but I'm gonna try and get through this one and the next movie, do the full 24 hours. And uh, uh, so yeah, so this is a good one to keep me going because I know I enjoy The Kindred. So yeah, we'll get this watch and I'll come back to you soon. Some of the awesome effects that I was talking about. Wow. Awesome looking monster in this one. Okay, so that's the Kindred. And I'm surprised that movie doesn't have more of a fan base or didn't gain more recognition over time as what happens with some horror movies because it's a really solid monster movie from the 1980s really great movie with some amazing practical effects so yeah good to see the kindred again so it's quarter six in the morning uh, this is now pretty brutal I'm really tired and just want to sleep. But there is time for one more movie just to push us to the 24-hour mark. So uh, let's get on that one. Okay, so for the, the 14th movie, the final movie of this marathon, we're going to go with The Horror of Party Beach from 1964. So this was suggested by Alan Scouser. Thank you, Alan, for getting involved. You put, looking forward to this one, Bryn. I have a suggestion, the horror of Party Beach. So, yeah, thank you for that. So, we started this marathon almost 24 hours ago with Humanoids from the Deep from 1980. I've always seen this movie as kind of like a, a precursor to that film. This is kind of like Humanoids from the Deep, but from the 60s, so... Since we started with Humanoids from the Deep, I thought it'd be cool to kind of round this off with a similar kind of movie. So, final one for the marathon, The Horror of Party Beach. Okay, here we go. So this is a very cheesy movie, but it's one that I do enjoy. So this is the last one for this marathon. So it's... Uh, just coming up to 6am, you can see it's starting to get light outside, so yeah, it's been fun for the most part, but uh, anyway, I'll get this one watched and uh, I'll come back at you to, uh, to round this whole thing off.
Yeah, the monsters in this are pretty goofy looking, but I've always enjoyed it. Okay, that is the horror of Party Beach. That is a very silly, but very fun film. You should definitely check it out. And uh, that is as in-depth as I can go right now. I am so tired. I feel very queasy. So it is nearly 20 past seven. I started, just about started filming about quarter to eight yesterday morning. So I'm going to get this wrapped up. Okay, so that was the 24-hour monster movie marathon. Managed to get 14 films again like last year, so managed to equal that number, which I'm happy about. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who suggested a film and who watched this long video. I, I appreciate it so much. I'm so tired right now, I can hardly speak, but I really do appreciate you getting involved and I hope you enjoyed seeing me do this. So I'm going to go and get some sleep now. I'm going to recover and I'll be back soon uh, with some more videos. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.